Hello everyone, welcome to the channel for everything Arsenal and everything football. Thanks for being here. I hope you're all doing well and welcome to the 3 in 3 review where I discuss and review the game in 3 minutes talking about the 3 things that we learned in a particular game. Last time out we faced City and we lost 1-0 so here are the 3 things that we learned in the 1-0 defeat against Manchester City. The first thing that we learned from the game is of course that Manchester City are miles ahead of us. Looking at the starting 11, comparing it to ours, keep in mind that that is not even the best starting 11, you'd only argue for Tierney and Saka. Tierney is probably better than Zinchenko and Saka is probably better than Bernardo Silva. The rest of the field, Ederson and Leno, you can say Leno is a good goalkeeper, but Ederson in terms of his kicking and everything else, he's slightly better or way better than him. Obviously, the likes of Cancelo are better than Bellerin. Diaz is way better than the likes of Holding. In midfield, Fernandinho, a guy who's not even been in the first team this season, is way better than the likes of El Nene. Up front, Aubameyang has been our best player, but um, as of now, doesn't really show it, so you could clearly see that they are better team than us and they've been better for a while ever since they had company Yaya Toure, David Silva. Unfortunately, they are miles ahead of us. The second thing that we learned, probably something that we all know anyway, is that Shaka and El Nene cannot play together. I definitely understand the thinking behind it. City have a very, very strong midfield, so Maybe if you place a Bios or a Willock when you're at Arsenal and they're too attacking, you leave so many gaps in the middle. But the thing is, the truth is that Shaka and El Nene are both too slow anyway. So even if you place six El Nenes and six Shakas in the middle, you're still going to be dominated by just Gunduan and De Bruyne because they are too slow and the ideas are not there. Yes, they are powerful, they are physical, they'll earn some fouls and everything, um, stop the attacks sometimes, but... How many times are they going to be gotten the better of? I'm a strong believer of that of a midfield wins the games. The midfield battle, when you win it, you're definitely looking good to win the game. So for the both of them, definitely we have to sell at least one of them in the summer, unfortunately. The third and final thing that we learned from the 1-0 defeat against Manchester City is yet again, we start the games too slowly. Last time out, we played City in the Carabao Cup. They scored within one minute. The season where we played them um, under Jumbach, they scored like two goals in the first 10 minutes. We cannot be starting the games like that. That literally throws away the whole game plan out of the window. And forgetting about City for a second, we've also done that a couple of weeks ago against Aston Villa. They had a one goal lead within one minute and that just puts the pressure too much pressure on you, too much pressure on you. And that is not the only time. I remember the Emirates Stadium, McGinn scored against us for Aston Villa within 30 seconds and the goal was disallowed. So why not? I want to see the same Arsenal where we saw against, uh, the same Arsenal we saw against Wolves. Dominate the game from the first minute. Dominate the game from the first minute. There's a reason we have the best second half performances in terms of not conceding goals. And it's basically because we concede all our goals in the first half. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be doing this after every Premier League game and after a couple of Europa League games when you have time. Make sure you drop a like, make sure you subscribe if you're new, comment your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Keep staying safe and I'll catch up with you guys later.